And uh, I have to do this. This is just so nice. Look at this one great big gigantic casting. 皆さん、こんにちは。冒頭からムーローさんがモデル Y のメガキャスティングに興奮しているところをお見せしました。えー、今日は、えーま、イーロン・マスクとムーローさんの対談の第2弾翻訳してみましたが、えー、シートについてと、そしてオートパイロットについては面白いんですが、メガキャスティングについては非常に面白いです。ただ、これについては伏線がちょっとありまして、このメガキャスティングというのは、えー、鋳造技術といって、型を作る、車のボディの型を作る技術なんですけども、これまで従来、車のメーカーは小さいパーツを組み合わせてこの型を作ってたんですが、テスラは本当に革新的な技術と言われているんですが、大きな鋳造の型を一気に作って小さいパーツを全部省くということで、ムーノさんも非常に興奮していて、いる革新的な技術で製造業ではトップを走るというふうに言われているようです。これによってさまざまなパーツを省けますしパーツを組み合わせるときに発生するエラーですね間違いも防げるということでコストが大きく削減できるというふうに言われています。テスラはこういった製造技術においてもトップを走っているんですね。ただ単に EV のバッテリーとか自動運転だけじゃなくて、そしてムーノさんが興奮させたのはモデル Y からこのメガキャスティングが使われたということです。しかし、モデル Y の後に発売された2021年のモデル3にメガキャスティングが使われなかったということで、ムーノさんが切れまくっていると、その動画はこちらです。ちょっとその対談の前に見てください。This,、uh, this is the kind of thing that,、uh, that makes engineers get all excited. It's almost as good as、um, it, this is really, really what I'd like to see, and I don't know why they didn't do this. I mean, think about it. They had, they, now they have the,、uh, the single casting、uh, for the Model Y. Why don't they just fire this baby up? Now, there's a lot of other reasons. Maybe they're not doing it. I can't think of a single one, but normally what happens is somebody doesn't want to spend money on new tooling. They want to say, oh no, we've got to keep this stuff. Oh, this is the boat anchor that's holding everybody else back. Tesla needs to not, not listen to some financial bonehead. めちゃくちゃ切れてました。ファイナンシャルボーンヘッドの言うことを聞く,はず聞くべきじゃない。ファイナンシャルボーンヘッドというのは、おそらく、まあまあ、お金についてぐちぐち言う経理部とか財務部の間抜けという<笑>ことなんだと思いますが、さて、マスクとの対談でその間抜けが一体誰だったのかわかりますが<笑>、その、ムロさんがそ,のそれについて質問するときの仕草がめちゃくちゃ笑けます。それでは対談のシート、カーシート、そしてオートパイロット、そしてメガキャスティングの部分です。どうぞお楽しみください。We've gone about almost 6,000 whatever, I can't remember, 6,000 plus miles so far in a couple of days,、yeah. in a few days. And、uh, the seats in your car are phenomenal.、Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. I, I can't say enough about them. I, I,、uh, I drive a, a, a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. And,、uh, and if I had to sit in that seat for an hour,、uh, I'd have to get a chiropractor <laughs>、sure. and, uh, and, a, and, and, a, and probably surgery. These seats, we were sitting in them for hours、yeah. and hours and hours and hours.、Yeah. And there's no fatigue. They're brilliant. And、yeah. you make them yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So,、uh, I mean, what, what we're really trying to do there with the seat is.、Um, Um, and we, we put a lot of effort into this is、um, <clears throat> minimize any peaks and pr- any pressure peaks. So it, it、yeah. like、evens out the pressure.、Um, yeah. Like if, if your butt hurts, it's basically going to be because there's, there's some part of the seat that is、um, producing a, a, a pressure peak. Yeah.、Uh, and, that, and that's going to just cut off your circulation and make your butt hurt. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah.、Um, but but there have been quite a few iterations. In fact, I mean, we, we've, the, the early Model S's had. I think probably the worst seat of any car I've ever sat in. <laughs>、wow. I mean, I, I call it the stone toadstool. <laughs> it's like、stone. if you wanted to sit on a stone toadstool, that、yeah. was the early Model S seats. We, it's like we try to go from, okay, from stone toadstool to something that is just,、um, I don't know, lap of luxury. It just feels great, you know? Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that you can sit in for a long time and it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it's still comfortable. 
that, that was a long journey and a lot of effort. I would suggest that that seat is, in my estimation, for my body and one is the best seat on the planet. There's nothing better than yeah. that. And a lot of the OEMs, <clears throat> they don't, they don't want to make uh, seats because they say that's something that should be outsourced. And I believe that anything you touch, anything that, uh, that you're going to interface with, yes, has, to be, has to be made in-house because that's your profound knowledge. So. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I have to tell you about the best stuff. And okay, so we had, um, we had the uh, beta autopilot uh, yeah. system. And, um, <clears throat> and we did have problems. Mm -hmm. But the problems weren't with your system. They were with the roads. People are painting, either they don't paint uh, in certain areas, or they paint right in the center. So how are we gonna get legislation to make it so that things are consistent between states? In the old days, it probably didn't make much difference but now we're moving into self-driving yeah. and uh well uh, i mean frankly, i think <clears throat> for self-driving um even if the road is painted completely completely wrong um and uh, a ufo lands in the middle of the road the, the car still cannot crash and still needs to do the right thing so the like what really matters like the prime directive for the autopilot system is don't crash um like that that really uh <laughs> overrides everything um yes. so no matter what the lines say or how the road is done, the, the, the thing that needs to happen is minimizing the probability of impact while getting you to your destination conveniently and comfortably. Yes. Um, but, but the prime directive, absolute priority, is uh, minimize probability of, of injury to yourself or to uh, anyone on the road, on the pedestrians or anything like that. So, and, and it's really, it, it can't be uh, dependent on r the road markings being correct or anything like that. It's just got to be, no matter what, it's not going to crash. And, uh, and we taped it. And you can hear me going, you know, my uh, voice went up about three octaves. I was so excited. Um, Corey yeah. said he's got a sore ear from me giggling or whatever. I have never, I've sat in, in F-18s. I didn't fly them, but I was sat in them and I saw how everything was supposed to work on the ground. Yeah. I, I flew, or through a simulator, I flew a C-17. I know what you can do and what you can't do, what autopilot will go to, and I never seen anything, never ever seen anything quite like what you've got in the new self-driving thing. This, this is just absolutely brilliant. This should get into the marketplace as fast as possible. It's, it's, it's accurate. It's much more accurate than what we have in the, in the Model 3. It's accurate. It's, it's kind of aggressive because if there's a hole, it'll, yeah. it'll find that hole. It makes left-hand turns, which I've heard from everybody can't <laughs> be done. I mean, these are the things yeah. that this is the, this will save more lives than airbags, seat belts, and anything else that anybody's ever, ever gotten. Because I think that's correct. This, it will. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really, I, I was so impressed, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And I, I have some videotape and I just asked you for using it. I, I want to put that out. I, wanna, sure. I want the yeah. rest of the world to know what the new standard is. Because yeah. in the auto world, <clears throat> some people are going to win, some people are going to lose, and some are just going to fade away. Uh, the more they fade away, the worse it's going to be for the, for the general population. But I'm telling you, that, that system, I don't know who you developed or how it developed, but... That is absolutely yeah, it was developed stunning. developed internally, like we developed the hardware yeah. and the software. Um, uh, we've just got we've got a very talented team that we built from scratch uh, at Tesla for autopilot software and autopilot hardware. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it just we've got a really a lot of talented people. Your philosophy about getting rid of uh, lines of code. I have a philosophy about getting rid of parts. Sure. And the more parts you get rid, in fact, uh, a long time ago. When I counted up the number of things in the in the yeah. wheel area, uh, I said this should all be one part, and then totally agree. Yeah, and you, yeah, you got it. Actually, I can, I can tell you how, how that that problem arose, um, and it, it it was, uh, you know, um, like first of all, I think you can generally see the the errors, the organizational structure errors. They manifest themselves in the product. So, um, for uh, the you know. For, um, the, the, the sort of wheelhouse areas of the body, uh, uh, there was a lot of engineering done, and there were a lot of uh, right answers to the wrong question. Um, so somebody would say like, well, what's the best material to make this little section of the body out of? Or, and what's the right material to make this little section? And, and I, I think we've got probably the best material science team uh, in the world. Um, 
at Tesla, and then uh, they actually uh, a lot of them also do, do work at SpaceX as well. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, I'm coming to that question too. Or yeah. Go yeah. But so so uh, but the engineers would ask, what's the best material for this this purpose? Best material for that? And and, and they got like 50 different answers. Um, and they were all true individually, but they were not true collectively. A bit of a Frankenstein situation when you when you look at it um, all together. Um, yeah. And and it's uh, I, I, can't, I can't emphasize enough the nightmare of of, of sealing in between the gaps. That is like yeah. uh, that might be the most painful job in the yeah. whole factory is yeah. is spackling on the the, the, the sealant. Bios makes a slight mistake, then you've got like a, now you've got an MBH issue because you've got a little hole yeah. and you've got a leak issue, and it's it's just like yeah. you, this is terrible. So. Um, I mean, you can muscle through it, and we have, but it's just uh, it, way better to have a single piece casting. Um, mm. And then you don't have any gaps, no sealant, uh, you, don't, you don't have dissimilar metals, um, and you can uh, re reduce the size of the body shop dramatically. Right. Um, so just, just having the, the rear body castings for Model Y uh, allowed us to uh, reduce the, the body shop by 30%. But when you came up, oh, I will tell you. Uh. I'm very disappointed. I thought I was going to see a single piece casting in a Model 3 as well. I thought you were going to shoot the two and then glue it together, but that's all right. I mean, I, at some point we will we'll probably it. switch to a single piece casting, <clears throat> uh, but um, it, it, it's, it's like we, we, uh, we, we, I think we need to get the, probably the Texas factory and the Berlin factory going. Um, yeah. And uh, like we just need, we need a, like we do have an issue of like it's, it's hard to change the wheels on the bus when it's going 80 miles an hour down the highway. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Model 3 is like most of our, or was most of our volume. Model Y will become, it will exceed Model, Model yeah. 3. Um, but it's just, we, we, we just need basically an opportunity to um, <clears throat> kind of re redo the factory without blowing up the cash flow of the company. Right. Yeah. I mean, I understand uh, you've got a lot of stuff in play, so... これのテクニカル仕様をチェックの前にいくつかニュース出ていましたので簡単にい、えー、きたいと思います。テスラの4680、革新的な新型のバッテリーですね。パナソニックと共同で今年の後半か末にネバダの工場で、えー、生産を開始するというニュースが出ています。英語ではかなりポジティブなように見えるんですけど、日本のニュースを見ると、まだどこの工場に展開するとか、どの程度作るとかいう状況ではなく、今は4680の開発、試作することに集中しているとメダシエフォーということで、トーンはちょっと日本語の場合弱めに聞こえますが、もしこれができれば、非常にポジティブなニュースなんじゃないかなというふうに思います。もう一つのニュースが、テスラのイーロン・マスクが、えー、率いているボーリングカンパニー、地下にトンネルを掘って、そこに高速の車を通して渋滞を回避するっていう発想ですね。その、えー、プロジェクトが新たに、えー、ロサンゼルスとラスベガスの間ぐらいにあるサンバーナディーノというところで許可されたというニュースがありました。今、渋滞に悩まされている空港周辺のトラフィック、これが30分から数分程度になるということで進めているようです。地方政府ですね、アメリカの地方政府、どんどんこういうボーリングカンパニーの地下トンネルを使って渋滞回避、そして環境にもいいような仕組みを作ると、テスラと相乗効果でですね、どんどん車がもっと売れるようになるんじゃないかなというふうに思います。テクニカル仕様ですけども、RSI がちょっと下がりましたが、全体的に見て、この最も信頼できる RSI とボリュームのモデル 4.3%、昨日より若干改善されてますね。したがって、まあ、明日の株価は、えー、おそらくそんなに爆発的に増えないとは思います。えー、ただ、そんなに下がることもないというふうに予測されます。ショートレシオが 16.02 で、ちょっと低水準なのが気になりますけども、最近のテスラ株、あまりショートレシオと相関してないので、えー、気にする必要もないのかなというふうに思います。明日株価はどうなるんでしょうか。今日もご視聴いただきましてありがとうございました。よろしければ。チャンネル登録をお願いします。